love, man. It's a tricky thing, but you know, once you find that mutual love, then I feel like you you will never ever find love like it. Yes, and when love is mutual, you really can tell. Mm -hmm. And it's just like with the little things. Absolutely. The little things are the biggest things. Little things, especially like just a text of good morning. Good morning. How's your day? Good How night. Your week. Good night. Like, you know, like what are you doing today? What do you have going on? Like just thought. Like the do thought you need that anything? Put, gets put into it. I think that really, really, really can tell. Yeah, and like this goes for relationships, like significant others, mm -hmm. but it also goes for friends, even family. Family, yes. Literally, like, it, it goes for any type of relationship. Like, type do of you have to always be the one to text first on holidays? Or just in general, like, mm -hmm. do you always have to be the conversation starter? Because, like, for some of my family that I don't get to see often because they're, you know, mm -hmm. so far away, sometimes I feel like every holiday I'm like, maybe this time I won't text first. Yeah, maybe see, I'll and see. That, and that's the thing. Some people think that that's not okay to do. That is perfectly okay. If you, especially because, if you feel like you're not, the love's not mutual. Yeah, or because... The love's not, the effort's not there. Yeah, and this year I finally noticed, like, wow, I've been the one texting first for this specific uncle every single yep. year. This year on Thanksgiving, I didn't text him, and guess what? I didn't receive anything. Wow. Mm -hmm. That says a lot. And then on Christmas, he did surprise me though. He texted me first. Really? See, but he that's might—he probably was like, "Oh." See, and that's what happens though. But that's that's how you know the love that he at least loves you now. He loves you now because he, you know, he was like, "Oh, I, maybe I hurt her feelings. Maybe I upset her." Mm -hmm. So he trying to fix that. Yes. That's that's also how you know love's mutual when they try to maybe fix a wrongdoing when they know they hurt you and then want to make up for it. Yes, that's so true. And same with like friends. Like, yes. Same like even significant other yeah like and the, another thing i think about is like you're really close to someone right your mm -hmm. significant other your best friend someone in your family mm -hmm. if they know like say they know someone else in your life hurt you dearly like really bad like they really Deep. hurt you in my opinion if the love is really mutual with my best friend or whoever it is I feel like out of being loyal to me, if they know whoever it is hurt me so bad, they shouldn't go behind my back and like want to be friends with them or like want to be close with them or like, you know what I mean? I agree. Like, why would you do that? Why would you, like that's hurting me so much more. It's, you know what, and I think it's a little bit of like hurting your trust. Yeah, because like, why are you okay? Which I think is also a huge factor of mutual love. Trust. If you can trust them, but if they don't trust you, then what is that? Yeah, and like, if, like, you know, if, like, we love each other so much, how could you be okay with someone hurting me so bad? Mm -hmm. And, like, same with people who, like, talk about other people. It's like... That's my biggest In a friend honest. situation, yeah. Like, whenever, like, say you're, like, your best friends with someone. This actually has happened to me. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm best friends with whoever, okay? Well, she's friends with so-and-so. But me and so-and-so, like, no, we don't get along. Like, she betrayed me and, like, whatever. Yeah. Well, so-and-so likes to talk about me negatively. But my best friend so happens to be around while it's happening. Um, I don't think you're my best friend or that you care about me or love me as much as I do. If you're going to sit there and be the bystander. It's just that she just sat there. Yeah, like That's why would problem. you, why are you comfortable with someone talking negative, negatively about your best friend mm -hmm. that you love so much? It'd be different if she if, stood up. Yeah, like if she, you, like, yeah, exactly. for your honor. <laughs> if she stood up, that's showing mutual connection, exactly. mutual love, mutual care, mutual effort. Not exactly. But if you're going to sit there, okay, it's, it's one thing to continue. That really puts in perspective, wow. It's one thing to continue to be someone's friend mm -hmm. if they like hurt your best friend, but like have boundaries. Boundaries, exactly. But there's a an it's another thing to like. No, I'm just gonna let her talk her shit yeah, on my best too, friend. That too, because that's not, that's something I hate worse than flip flop. Yeah. Make up your mind, please. Mm-hmm. 
and then with like a significant other for me showing mutual love is like just like like whenever you see me do you smile mm -hmm. are you excited to get off work and see me mm -hmm. or like even like if you open the door for me on the first date if there's like real love there like don't stop doing that just yeah. because oh you're comfortable now mm -hmm. like if you are doing something to get the girl or to get the guy or to get anybody and then like you really like fall in love with that person don't stop doing that and stuff don't. like if you want to keep them you better keep working to keep them and for me i think that's because i feel like when you're in any type of relationship especially when it comes to like friendships and like when it comes to like significant others i feel like you guys have to grow together you know what i mean I feel like mm -hmm. you guys have to go through stuff together to yep. make you guys the people you are yes and you also have to respect each other like mm -hmm. if we respect is a huge thing yeah mm -hmm. and like whoever you're with like do you support each other enough to be support, like i know we yes. both have to go down opposite paths right now but are, we're gonna stick together through it like even if we're apart physically like spiritually we're gonna stick together and we're gonna make our way back together yeah. and we're gonna be successful and happy and healthy mm -hmm. like are you gonna put the work in to stay with the person you love or are you just gonna give up that's also setting down a plan too so to make sure things are actually finite you mm -hmm. know and like set in place yeah and another thing is love really takes forgiveness it does. Oh, yeah, it does. And people make I say mistakes. that all the time. Like, my best friend, Juliana, she has hurt me in the some of the worst ways possible. I'm sorry. But I love her so much, I forgave her. And I've hurt her, too. We, I've done my fair share. Mm -hmm. We've definitely hurt each other. But it's just, like, a part of growing. And, like, as you grow, you make mistakes. And sometimes you don't, you really are just like, wow, I didn't know. You don't realize. I was especially wrong. in the moment. Especially in the moment, you do not realize. Sometimes in the moment, you're like, you just do it. And then after, you're like, oh my God. Like, I've really messed up. I really hurt that person. I shouldn't have done that. Like, that was awful. But if you really love someone, you can look past those things you and can. be like, I know deep down, like, that's not, that was nothing to do with who you were. Exactly. Or who you are. Like, you, that was just... Especially in this point in time, since it was in the past. Yeah, like, that's... It's it's okay to, like, see things and be like, it's in the past, we're going to move forward. Yeah. And, like, okay, yeah, if that person were to do some, like, whatever it was again, mm -hmm. now that's where it's like, okay, what are you doing? Because that's exactly. intentional at that point. Exactly. And that is failing to show love. If you're doing it again, that's not love. I don't think so either. But if you do it once... And, like, you realize how, like, oh, my God, I should never do it again. Like, what was going on? What, what, why would I do that? And then you really don't do it again. That's love. Yeah. And it wouldn't be fair for the other person to be like, oh, well, you never loved me because you made this mistake. Like, if it's, like, a one-time, one-and-done, yeah. I'm sorry, let's move past it, stronger, we're better than ever now, that's fine. Yeah. But if it's, like, a constant, like, okay, I'm just going to... Oh, I know that she'll forgive me, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. And no, see, and that's also that's like that's so evil in a way. That's like you're deliberately trying to hurt me you're and that's manipulate so, me yes. into you know trying to forgive you. Like you're li like literally trying to make me. Yes. I don't know. That's that's weird to me. It is. That's a red flag. It's really yeah. And that's whenever, eventually, that person just you out know, your life. Yeah, just cut, cut them out your life. Cut. Yeah. Yeah. No. So. Definitely, like, mutual love comes with respect, trust, communication. Boundaries. Boundaries, oh my god, like, boundaries, that's, I feel like also people have struggled with saying their boundaries. Yeah. But it's really, I think it's the most important thing to do in a relationship. Especially uh -huh. when it first starts. Yes. Because and, that lets you know. Who and supporting one another. Supporting, support. Encouraging. And, yes. Like, encouraging, like... Say someone, say whoever you're dating, like they have a, they don't put their seatbelt on. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm like, please put your seatbelt on. Like that's me showing my love. Like, True, yeah. I'm reminding you, like, come on, put your seatbelt on. And that's, see, some people would think that's not love, but like if you, like, caring about your safety, mm -hmm. that, I feel like that's the biggest sign of love. And like, another thing, 
if the person I'm dating, like, if they're always like, oh, like, I'm just like so, I feel like I should have more muscle or something. Like, they're mm -hmm. upset about that. Okay, well, then let's go to the gym together. Oh, I see. Like, yeah. let's make it a thing that we can do together. I would, yes. Like, encouraging. I would love that. Keeping each other determined. Like, we both have stuff to and work on, so why not do it together? That goes hand in hand, too, with, like, growing together as well. Like, I'm yes. not going to let you grow by yourself, like, and I'm not going to let myself just grow without you. And I'm not going to, like, if you're sitting there and telling me that you're not confident in your body, first of all, obviously I'm dating you. I think you're gorgeous mm -hmm. how you are, but if you feel like you have something to work on, let's work on it together. Like, that's True, fine. Yeah. That's, like, that's, that's a beautiful thing, honestly. Yes. All right. So, can cheating be justified? No. Yes. Really? I mean, I agree, but, but it just depends. Exactly. If there's like a, there's a but. specific, there's special, a rare occasion, there is definitely like five percent of the time it can be justified. Yeah. Or maybe one percent of the time. I'm not. I feel very like there's good always the one percent in a situation where it's like. Yeah, well, the can one. Can you blame percent. them? Can you really blame them? Especially just for another love. You know what I mean? Like your true, yes. absolute love too. Mm hmm But for, the reason, like, why I say no, like, to begin with, is because I just see cheating as a betrayal. Yes, hundred percent. A betrayal of my love, my trust, all of that. So it's like, if you don't want to be with me, then I feel you should have just said that in the first place mm -hmm. instead of go behind my back. Yeah. But then there's situations where you know we're like, I'm. I could be in a relationship already, but it's not really what. Is needed for me mm -hmm. and then I find a relationship I need that I know is gonna elevate me to where I need to be you know so it's like there's situations where like yeah and sometimes it's not like say you feel trapped in and oh yeah I've known so many people yeah and then like say that person like is always like closing like they're always just closing their door like they're not opening their door up to any new love mm -hmm. like you know, what if they cheated themselves of actually finding exactly. their true love because they were focused on their not true love. So it's just like a really hard thing to think about. But for me, in my special rare situation that I would like to talk about oh is my mom okay. and my stepdad. Mm -hmm. Um. They were married for about 12 years, and it was great in the beginning. My sisters came along because of them. Um, That's beautiful, though. It's amazing. I'm so glad. And that, you're close with your sisters. Yeah, I'm like, I actually like their mom, like their second oh, mom. Okay. I'm like their big sister mom. Mm -hmm. But I'm so thankful that they were together. But even as a little girl, I knew, like... I had this feeling like inside me, I was just like, something always told me like, I just, I know this isn't forever for this them. This isn't love. Like I knew it. I, and you even know, as you a little girl, I sensed, so like, I sensed they, they it. I sensed it. I told my mom before they got married. I was they like, know. I literally said, I was like, please, please don't marry him, mom. <laughs> and I was so little. I was like six years old. And That's I was know. used to just, for me back then as a child, it was definitely more selfish because I was like, Aww. no, like I want to, I don't want to share my mom. Like Aww. I want to keep sleeping with her in the same bed. I don't need you coming in here. Like, what are you doing? That's just like an immature thing though. You know, that's like a. And then I also told her, I was like, mom, I know, like as a little girl, I said, I was like, mom, I feel like you don't actually love him. And she was like, I do, Aaron, I do. But for some reason, like I sensed as a little girl, which is that's so weird crazy. to think about. No, I that, sensed no, it. And then I saw them, their marriage was, like, good, but it was never, like... Happy? Like, it was happy, but it was always stressful. Like, it was happy oh. at one point, but it was very, like, short, short happy. I see, I see. And there was always just, like, arguing about money every single day. Oh, man. Then it turned into him being an alcoholic. Oh, so then man. he was wasting money on alcohol. Sorry about that. And then things started getting really toxic. They stopped talking. And then everything was just always about money. And then eventually we moved houses. So then the bills got bigger. So now it's even more stress about money. And then the stress and then fighting every day, he starts saying, oh, well, this is why I drink. So then he starts drinking more. And then he comes into this. Now he's like a raging alcoholic. And then he turns abusive. 
And then my mom just was like so embarrassed to even go out in public and like him be, be with, with her because he would get too drunk or like he would just act a fool or she'd just be like I can't I can't do this anymore so she shut down she started just hanging out in her room she said listen I want you sleeping on the couch like I don't want to even sleep in the same bed as you anymore they stopped romantically being together yes they were married they had the ring on the finger but it didn't mean anything at all especially at that point and that was for years, mm -hmm. like for years. Oh, man. And it's like limbo. Yeah. And like, America. literally she would always like complain about him to me and he'd complain about her to me. So it's just like a toxic thing is I'm in the middle and I'm like, like, that's not, I was like, that's I love both of you guys. I can't sit here and that's not fair for the child. And I, then I started realizing like, oh shoot, the stuff that my stepdad is doing like, wow, he really is wasting a lot of money on alcohol. So now I understand why my mom is on him every day. But then there were times where I'd be like, okay, but the way she goes about it, sometimes that can cause like such stress that you do look for a relief. And I guess his relief was the alcohol. Unfortunately, that's what he chose. But then he started being abusive and that's where it's just not okay. Draw, enough yeah, is enough. Draw, draw the line. Amen. So instead of her sitting in her room and you know listening to him like oh well if i'm not out with you then you're not going out well she said fuck that i'm <laughs> gonna just go out make friends and she did meet somebody yeah. so yes her and my stepdaughter they were married at that point but and it would not be fair situation mm -hmm, it would not be fair to my mom to close the door to on the her, love that she met on her, on her heart and her she heart it was she literally kept saying to him, like, we're getting divorced, we're getting divorced. And he kept fighting it, like, no, we're not. No, I was, was going to ask, too, like, what was the reason why they're together, but I see now. Yeah, and it was also, like, my mom... And divorce is hard, it's expensive, it's all that. And yeah, and it was really stressful because I was in dance. Both my sisters are in dance. I was about to say. That's a lot of money a year. Bills you have to pay as well. And the mortgage, like, both their names are on our house. It was, it was, like, it's, like, so confusing, mm -hmm. but... We were like, okay, we're going to try to make this work. You know, living with two incomes is definitely a lot easier than divorcing and then only having one income and then having to worry about the child support, which that's a whole fail. But we just tried to make it, you know, functional, but like dysfunctional, but functional enough that we were living, mm -hmm. but it just became toxic whenever the abuse started and whenever like... The craziness started and like having to get the police and mental facilities involved Damn. all the time. That's when it's exhausting and like we and were that, trying so hard to help him and he just wasn't accepting it. See, and that's the thing. I feel like when you help someone so much, it, was it, for it gets years. a point where you have to just literally repel away from them. And sometimes the only thing, which now I've heard he is doing better, which I hope, I hope that's still the case. Don't fully know because I haven't talked to him since he was arrested. Oh, yeah. But it's just we put so much love into him and unconditional love. Like he kept hurting us. He was saying awful things, doing awful things, constantly lying, betraying, stealing, like so many awful things. But inside, me, my sisters, my mom, we all kept saying no. Deep down, we know this isn't him. We know this is just the alcohol that took over his brain. This is not who he is. This we, we couldn't even recognize him, and we knew that. We loved him so much that we kept trying for years, for years and years. We sent him to rehab. We sent him to the hospital. Like, we got so much help. We did everything we could. Eventually, you just have to love someone so much that you let them go. Cut the cord. And you let them hit rock bottom. And sometimes hitting rock bottom is the only way that you will realize you have to want help for yourself. Because we wanted help for him, but he didn't want it for himself. Yep, and you. And rock bottom, him hitting it, him not being able to talk to his daughters for two years. Close, no, two years now. Yeah, two years. Maybe a year and a half. Close to two years. Something like that. Mm -hmm. It finally has helped him. Unfortunately, it's the hard way. But... We loved him so much, we had to let him go. And now I'm hoping, now that he's getting better, we will develop that relationship with him again. 
it won't be the same, of course, mm -hmm. but obviously we still have that love for him. But whenever someone's acting like that, sometimes you just, you have to know, like, you gotta move on. Yeah. And you can't, if you want help for someone and they don't, sometimes that person needs to learn to love themselves enough to want the help. Wow. Yeah. I agree. That was very helpful. Crying a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's unfortunate the way that some people have to learn, but. It, it really is. Sometimes that's just what it takes. That's, I was about to say, that's maybe the only way that they can learn. Yeah, and it's not like we just like, the first time he messed up. Oh, you're out. Divorce. Nope. My mom slept with him for 12 years and for, I'd say yeah, not a, a good eight years. That's not little. The addiction was a big problem. It just oh, got man. worse and worse. Like at first it was just like, you're having too many beers, okay? Like let's chill. Yeah, Maybe yeah. don't have a case of beers in one day. But it's not like he was acting crazy or being a jerk or like being abusive. But then it progressed into like hard liquor every mm. day. Like those fireball shots, you know those like shooters? progress into like those yeah, so. then it went from that like those little bottles to like actual big bottles of liquor every single day so that's when it's like like you're you are off your rocker right now you need like you need to want this for yourself mm -hmm. too we can't just want see so i can see how that would lead a person to and i wouldn't even say cheat in that case i would literally say Move she on. chose herself, yeah. Like, choosing herself. And she finally opened her heart to the love that she deserved. Des oh, wow. And that's the bottom line, that what you deserve. Yep. Wow.